Hi, my name is Greg Hudson with uh, Mantis Marine, and today we're going to talk about the valves and vents of the Mantis Scuba Compressor. Okay, but before we do that, let's remind ourselves of the ingredients that make up the filtration chamber itself. So the air leaves the second stage and comes into the filtration chamber, first going into the water condensing tower where the water is removed, and then goes in the air filtration chamber where the air filter lives to remove other impurities, and then leaves via, 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 via this hose uh, and goes to the tank. Okay. Now, remain, rem, let, let's imagine that we're going to decompress the chamber. How do we do it? Well, the air vent is the valve that does it, and to open it, just simply unscrew. And you can hear the air leaving the chamber. And to close it, screw clockwise. All right, so the next valve we're going to talk about is a PMV valve, so the pressure maintenance valve. So let's first talk about what is the function of the PMV valve. Well, the air that leaves the compressor comes in into the filtration chamber, has moisture in it. And we don't need moisture in the air that we breathe when we scuba dive. The moisture is removed in the water condensation chamber, just from the pressure of the compression of the air itself. But it's not good enough. The extra moisture remaining is removed by the air filter in the air filtration chamber. And that air filter, we need to protect it. When you store the compressor in your garage or your boat, we don't want the ambient air to come in into the filtration chamber and contaminate or saturate the air filter. So that's where the PMV valve comes in. The PMV valve maintains a positive pressure at all times inside the chamber, even when you're not using it. So that means when you start up the compressor, it sometimes may be a while before the air actually starts coming out into the cylinder because we need to pressurize the cylinder and the valve is not going to open till you reach 800 psi. When your compressor reaches 800 psi in the filtration chamber, that's when this valve opens and allows air to get into the cylinder. So we're going to actually turn on the compressor and show you how that works. So, the compressor is on. The pressure here is below 800 psi, so no air is coming out into the cylinder. Once the pressure reaches a thousand, which is about now, now I can feel that the air is coming out. I have this valve open, that's how I know the air is coming out. So let's say we need to adjust the PMV valve. Uh, you would first need to loosen the tightening nut, this nut right here, and then use an Allen wrench to adjust the inner nut clockwise to close, counterclockwise to open. The valve is set up to where it opens at around 800 psi. That's when the air leaves the filtration chamber and goes to the tank and closes at 500 psi. That means when you stop operating the compressor, the valve will close and maintain a pressure of 500 psi inside the filtration chamber to protect the air filter from ambient air coming in. Now, if you store your compressor for a long time, several months, the air eventually will leak out of the compression chamber and the pressure will be below 500 psi. And that means when you start your compressor up again, for the first few minutes, you'll be pressurizing the filtration chamber and no air will be leaving the filtration chamber into the tank until the pressure is 800 psi again. And at that time, the air will leave the filtration chamber and start filling your tank. Okay, guys, so next thing we're going to talk about is mechanical pressure relief valve. And uh, the function of the valve is very simple. We don't want to overpressurize the system. Now, your tanks, you're filling them to 3000 PSI. So if you uh, didn't pay attention and you run the compressor a little too long, the first safety mechanism to make sure we don't over overpressurize the system is a mechanical pressure relief valve that opens at around 3300 PSI. This is a valve here. Now they all come pre-calibrated to open at that pressure. If for some reason maybe you messed with it or um, somehow the valve is not is opening too soon or it's uh, uh, not opening soon enough, uh, you can adjust the valve and uh, it's very simple. All you need is an adjustable wrench and the top nut here is what you were, where you would put your wrench on. And it's simple. 
clockwise to close to increase the pressure and counterclockwise to open to decrease the pressure at which it opens. So let's go ahead and turn on the compressor and see how it works. All right. So this is going to be a while to get to that pressure. So we're going to run the compressor till it reaches to 3300 PSI and the mechanical pressure relief valve is going to open. So at 3000 PSI right now. And if you put your finger over here, you can feel when the valve opens. You can hear the air hissing. It might be hard to hear over the sound of the compressor. The valve is now completely open and the pressure is no longer building up. It's venting the air. I'm going to turn off the compressor. You can hear the valve is slowly closing once the air is vented. And we're back to 3000 PSI and the valve is closed and uh, you can continue filling your tank. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the fill valve. And the fill valve is a connection between the hose of the compressor and the tank. And the important thing to remember here is whenever you wanna remove the fill valve, you always wanna vent the air that's pressurized in the system. Otherwise, you can have the, this hose really hurt you. So the, the way to do that is to counterclockwise, unscrew the screw. And we're gonna wait till it's completely depressurized before we even try to unscrew this screw to remove the valve. So we wait. All right, so now that you can no longer hear, hear the hissing of the air, we know there's no more pressure inside this hose, that's when we can unscrew the screw that locks the fill life under the tank and then remove the fill valve. But remember, we decompress the hose, but there's still pressure inside the filtration chamber. Remember, we want to protect that air filter, so we're always maintaining 500 PSI of pressure in the filtration chamber via the PMV valve. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is emergency burst disc valve. It's not really a valve, but more of an emergency uh, vent in case the mechanical pressure relief valve fails. We have a second layer of protection, which is a breast disc, which would blow at 4,000 PSI and decompress the system. Uh, if for some reason that happens to you, spare discs should have been included with your initial compressor shipment and if you need them, just contact us and we'll send you one out for free. All right, guys. The next thing we're going to talk about is a water drain vent. It is located over here and is used to drain the water and the oil that collects in the water condensing chamber. And that procedure should be done really every 15 minutes of compressor operation. To open, simply unscrew counterclockwise and to close, screw clockwise. 